So we are going to be chatting today in the notes part here to start, in the notes in part. Um, in page 19, the patterns in the coordinate plane. This point in our high school math lives, we've, we've graphed lines, we've plotted points, but maybe not always thought about what the chart means, what the equation means, and stuff like that. And so our main focus today is going to be to kind of start putting some of that into rules, which might actually make the connection a little bit easier sometimes, unless you're already an expert with all things graph and lines. So for instance, on this first one here, use the rule add 3 to get y. So instead of just me giving you a y equals equation, saying here, graph it, again, thinking about it in a little bit different of a way, but we're going to blend in the y equals stuff to this too. So add 3 to x to get y. We're just going to take all the x values, and we're going to add 3 to each of them. So by doing that rule, and this would work with any x values, these x values aren't special in any way, we can create ordered pairs that we actually can put onto a graph. And so if I take all of those x, y's, and get those in, even if I wasn't sure on anything else as far as graphing lines goes, I'd be able to plot those four points, hopefully have them make a straight line, we're gonna find out here in a minute, and then start to figure out what that would look like. So we're gonna do that. So for this first part, we're gonna kind of ignore this for a sec here. We're gonna take these points, and again, along here on the bottom, we got our x-axis, going up and down here. Vertically, we've got our y. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to plot our points. So again, x, then y. We don't see anything here in the corner. That's 0. So 0 to up 3. That would get my first point. So again, the 0 for x just means we don't go anywhere. We just go up. For 2, 5, we're over to 2 on x. We're up to 5 on y. Now, starting with this next point, we're going to start seeing if we're in line or not. Because any two points can make a line. But it's that third one's going to tell us. So 4, 7. Okay, I think we're looking good here so far. And then 7.10 to finish. Again, we're over on page 19 in the notes. And we're not looking for perfection here. If you happen to have a folder or something, not called a phone, that can help make a straight line here, we'll kind of do the best we can. If you got to wing it, hey, you got to wing it. I mean, it just it happens. So... Good. And anytime we're drawing lines, we're putting arrows on the end, because otherwise they're segments. And so just to kind of make a connection here, because we like to do that whenever we're doing any of these. So what would that look like if we were just doing it traditionally? So I'm going to bring this back down. Come on, fit in there. No, nah, not quite. Okay. Add 3 to x to get y. So add 3 to x to get y. And so if I'm comfortable with when stuff was in slope-intercept form, I could have looked at this on my graph and said, hey, you know, here's my y-intercept at 3. And my slope, if we don't see a number in front of x, is just 1. So if I went, let's see, up 1 over 1 up one over one, hey, look, all my points are on the line here. Or if, if I've got the tech available and I've got the calculator, I always can go to y equals in there 
and type in x, which is next to alpha, next to the green button on the ones we've got in here, plus 3, and then I can look at the chart. So to do the chart or the table in here, and again, for our purposes, I don't think we're going to need to do the chart. I think we're going to be able to do these rules okay without. But I just always like to put a little extra in here. Second graph, and what I would notice is all of the numbers that I had in my rule, my 0, 3, my 2, 5, my 4, 7, and my 7, 10 are all there. If I wanted to be able to plot more points, or if I wasn't sure on something. So lots of things that kind of combine together, but we probably don't even think about half the time that there's a rule involved with it. We just kind of do it. So that's what that first one is. But it's not necessarily just adding or subtracting that we're going to be able to do with these. So a little further down here on page 19, the next rule is multiply x by 2. So for a moment here, I'm going to freeze frame stuff. So the deal here is y is going to be multiply x times 2. So x times 2. Fill in your y and make your ordered pairs. And if you really want to go flying ahead of me here, you could even plot those over on that same graph and see what this looks like. So for those of you that may be checking this out later, you should be pausing me at this point so you're not just having all the answers given to you. That's, that's not useful. Terrily, too, we'll end up having a couple of questions down at the bottom to kind of start seeing where even these two problems themselves can kind of intersect each other in their in their own way. So, there those, hopefully getting those points completed at this point. So we'd be looking at our four points being at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 6, and 5, 10. And if we plot those, again, they lined up nice for us. We didn't have any oddballs or outliers that would end up causing a problem. And so we can actually take a little something extra out of this too. So a little help if you would be so kind. On the bottom here, there's two questions. It says, hey, where do these two lines intersect? Where do they cross? What coordinate point? Yeah, right there. At three, six, because if you look at the first rule, I had three, three plus three is six. If you look at the second rule, three times two is six. Makes sense that that's where they would come in the line. So how are the two lines similar or alike? Okay, so they both go up to the right, or we could say they have a positive slope, absolutely. That's an excellent point. What might we be able to say is a little different? Okay. We could say different starting points. Both have different origin. Okay. Okay, we could we could even say that one is steeper, or if you could say more vertical, exactly, than going with that. See, there's lots of things we can find with these 
that are a little bit different, but a little bit things that can be the same too. And one of the challenges we're going to take on here in a bit is if we're given the chart, can we figure out what the rule would be to be able to turn this back into like an equation or a start with that? But excellent, excellent start to the week here as far as that goes. So one last thing over on the back. Now, whether you want to go on this one where it says with the person next to you or someone near you, or if you want to kind of roll your own thing, you can. Um, I'm going to go back to freeze frame again in a minute because I want to be able to kind of walk around and, and see if we need any assistance on some things. But here on the back, fill in the two charts with the rules that are right above. So subtract 4 from x, add 2 to x. Graph them and kind of let's see if we can make some comparisons here again and see how this is. All right, so let's pull this back up. So just a, like I said, I think every person that came by that had been doing either their points or their lines were looking excellent on this. So we got our two lines on here. So now, if we take a quick peek at the bottom, which line would the point six two fall upon? So look on your graph to where six two would be. You can use mine as an example if you want to because we got colors to work with. Which color line would the point six two be on? Let's see here, six. So on mine, and again, on yours, maybe you say the bottom line, maybe you say the subtract four line, whatever that happens to be. For mine, it ends up being the, the purple one. There's one, and I know there's lots of, of similarities and differences and things, but here's there's one main one I'm looking for. What's something that's alike on both of these? I'm trying to pull back into Algebra 1 on you. These lines ever cross, do you think? They are parallel. They are parallel. Very nice. They are parallel. What's parallel mean? Yeah, they're never going to cross. They have the same slope, which we're going to bring back into play here a little bit as well. So here's the thing that we got that we're going to roll with today now. So note packet, completely situ situated, complete. Nice. We have that ready to go. As we head back over to the practice, so as you start, you're like, okay, this first part, you know, page 29 in the practice looks just like what we were doing a minute ago. You're like, okay. I do my rule, I get my pairs, I make my lines, I got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Nothing really new there. But here's what I wanted to actually go to for us because this is a little different. I wanna do one of them like with you kind of start to finish here. So you might be able to see what this is gonna look like and how we're gonna do this. This is what I've talked about before where, okay, what if I gave you a chart for your ordered pairs and you had to figure out the rule. So I can plot all these points. That's not going to be anything that's too rough. So let's see here. I'm going to come down here for a sec. So we got X. Okay. So I plot my points.
So, what is the rule per se? What am I doing to X on every one of those to get to Y? Okay. And so if I were, and I know it didn't ask it, but if I were asked, I could just say, hey, y equals x plus 5. That's putting it back into slope-intercept form, like you would have done in Algebra 1, and seen it again in Algebra 2, maybe a little too two. But just something to be considering as you're doing those. So that's the only reverse spot that we're coming as far as the practice portion of things go. So you get to play with that a little bit on 30. So we get to do it both ways. 31, the rules, it gets a little more interesting. Because now you're not given the rule. You're like, wait a minute. You're not giving me the rule or the pairs. What the heck are you doing? Okay. Here's what we're doing here. So on these, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for, and I'm actually going to go to D instead of C. There's a method to the hardy madness every once in a while. And what I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to be looking for points on my graph that I like to say go right through the crosshairs if I have any hunters out there. If you're looking through things or even to play video games with them, right in between where those vertical and horizontal lines cross, okay, in our grid, we're looking for the points that go right through those. I probably could have done that one too, but I went away from it. And so what that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna let me say, okay, so like here, my x value is two, my y is one, x is four, y is two, x is six, y is three, x is eight, y is four, bring that down a little bit. So this time I use the graph to get my x and y values, to get my ordered pairs. Divide by two. Nice. If I take my x value and I divide it by two, two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two, and so on. So x, divided by 2, we'll get, whoa, there we go. x divided by 2 is going to get me my y value. And that would work all the way through. So on those, if I got to play a little bit again, it gets me started. If you want to go for an extra challenge, if you're like, okay, Hardy, this is, this is beneath where I'm at. I am, I am capable of, of much better. The one on the very back, I'm not going to assign it. I will give extra points for it if you do it, though, when I get your practice packet. So back here, it's taking a word problem, an application, and giving you a pattern. Audrey writes five pages per hour, Emily writes eight. Oh, wow, that's a lot of pages per hour. Um, complete the table, show that, and then again, make it graph with it. So if you're up to that, even if you want to pair up with somebody, kind of chat about things, you can. And the last thing I'm going to have you do is, again, usually that lesson right before a weekend kind of gets lost in things because there's a couple of days between seeing stuff. So our last job today, besides the graphing, is to go back to that page before it. So back over here to 27. So we're basically going 27 to the end today. Your job is going to be here on the right side of the page, 16 through 20. So just a reminder, again, it may have been a while, we'll see. <laughs> when you're doing the ratios here, all we're going to do, because I'll do 10 and 11, because those are the two types you're going to see, and I want to make sure we, we've got a good example of them. In a basketball game, a player made eight baskets out of 12 attempts. So I'm going to be like, all right. If I can remember how to spell. 
and stay on the right page. What is the ratio of successful baskets to attempts? So you're like, well, you know, there's no other proportion to do. It's like, that's the only one. So all I'm gonna be doing here is reducing this. So ratios, let me get out of here for a minute. Ratios are just fractions. So eight divided by 12, there's that math button again, right below alpha. Enter, enter will get me set as far as that goes. So the ratio of successful at baskets to attempts would be two to three. If you made it a fraction and put it two over three, is that okay? Absolutely. So just kind of getting back into the flow, but they're not always just gonna be reduce one and you're done. Sometimes we have to do a little work. So I give you number 12. Ratio of cats to dogs in a pet store is three to four. All right, so three to four. We got cats, we got dogs. I'm just gonna put a little label in here. If there are 24 cats, this is why we like the label, because we gotta make sure same stuff is on the same level. Like I can't put the 24 down here because then I'm turning the cats into dogs. That'd be really confusing. How many dogs are there? We don't know, but we can find out. Because here, if we cross multiply, which seems weird because now we are mixing cat and dog info, but this works. We cross multiply and we've got 3D equals 96. We just got to divide by three. We find out that there are 32 dogs in that pet store. Holy, I hope that store is big. If it's not, that's going to be a little crazy. So basically, like we were saying here a moment ago, anything from 27 on is what you're playing with. But your only job here on 27 is that right side. And then with the graphs, you're just coming up with those rules and graphing. We're trying to keep life simple. We will deal with the quiz preview tomorrow, a little overview of everything we've done so far. And then Wednesday will be the quiz and I'll be collecting your practice packets. And again, with the practice packets, there's parts we've skipped over. There's parts like on this page where we've only done parts. So don't go back through Lincoln. You have to do every single problem in there. If you're not sure there's things on classroom, but otherwise, you know, if you, see you started in an area, just finish up some of those. I like to use the practice to see how you're understanding stuff. If you can understand stuff on the quiz, that's what's most important. So I will 